Hey, I always love Indians. They're just the most amazing round of applause. It's just, it's lovely. I'm ready for a stage dive now. It's just the best. <laughs> Salaam alaikum. You guys good? Okay, great stuff, man. So, uh, you're having a good uh, evening so far, guys? Yeah. yeah, it's nice to be doing live stuff again. It's so liquor, like for two years, for two years, I've been performing to a computer screen. Uncle! Two years, uncle, just performing for the computer screen. No response from the computer screen, just like you over here now. It's just, just like that. The comment section was more like exuberant than you, uncle. No, no. But like, it was heavy, right? It was heavy, bruh. You know, like, like two years ago, all my gigs were cancelled. Just like this. Pa, can you guys switch those, light, uh, those lights? Are those lights? Can you switch it on? To brighten up the thing? Can you brighten up the thing? I like to have... Can, can this go brighter? Okay, okay. If you can. I like the bright lights. Like, but two years ago, my gigs were cancelled. Gone. Just gone. Pa. And then people are like, but don't worry, Riyad, you're a medical doctor. At least you have medicine to fall back on. <laughs> the only problem with that is, I haven't done medicine in nearly 20 years. So I'm pretty sure my advice is going to be cutting edge. <laughs> like, doctor, I got coronavirus, you must rub Vicks, bro. Rub the Vicks. You know, my oxygen saturation is dropping. Zambuck, just lather the Zambuck. Oh, wait. Hey, bro, I didn't even know that was going on. You know, it's weird. People in the front row, right in the front row. You're watching the screen, uncle. You're watching this. I'm right here, bro. <laughs> right? There's higher definition here. Yeah. Like, I'm higher definition than that. Yo. Oh. <laughs> You're still watching the screen. It's okay. But it's weird. It's weird. You know, it was a strange time. COVID. You know, I was very troubling. I was very, very troubling to my family. We had to uh, rework a new normal, you know? Rework a new normal, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I like doing voices, right? I like trying to do voices in my house. So I would walk around the whole day doing voices. Like, because of the war in the Ukraine, um, I do this character from this movie called uh, Rounders, called Teddy KGB, right? I was walking around the house the whole day. He beat me straight up. Pay him, pay that man his money. Like, I, I'm an educated individual, bro. 45 year old father of four walking around the house talking to a hairbrush, he beat me. Pay him, pay that man his money. I'm a doctor, bro, a real doctor, not a dentist, a real <laughs> doctor walking around the house, he beat me. Pay, to my grandmother, grand, he beat me, pay him. It's like, Riyad, you make more noise than the children, Riyad. I sometimes catch my father just looking at me with disappointment. You know, my father's an orthopedic surgeon who has a super speciality in hand surgery, right? Just looking at me, like, from behind his newspaper. Yo, I paid so much money for this brat to be a doctor. Now we act like an outpatient. You know, even the domestic worker had trouble, you know? She's busy vacuuming over there. I walk out there like Mickey Mouse. Ha ha, ha ha. Miska, Miska, Mick, you missed the spot, huh? Hey, Donald, what's up with that job, boy? <laughs> She's like, <laughs> you know, I caught her talking to my wife. Uh, Fazana, can I talk to you for a minute? Can I talk to you? Riyadh, he like to talk to himself. Is he okay? Or is he a bit touched? And my wife didn't say no, he's a comedian and he uses his funny voices to create funny scenarios to distract people from the harsh reality of life. No. She was like, yeah, he doesn't want to take his tablets, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even, you must pray for him. I didn't even defend myself. I just burst in there. Poof. He beat me, pay him. Pay that me and his money. I'm a weird dude, dude. Very troubling person, you know. Like I had to work a renew, uh, rework a, a new normal. Right, with my wife, you know? And uh, I'm what they call a whooped husband, people. A whooped husband. But um, not like whooped in a good way. You, you know, uh, with a leather. <laughs> You've been a naughty boy. No, no, no. For me, I'm whooped as in I listen to my wife. For me, it's more like 50 shades of obedience. You know what I'm talking about? I'm a victim here, bro. I'm not like Christian Grey, I'm Muslim praying. That's me. 
You know, Riyad, can you get some milk at the shop? Okay, I'm going to go now quickly. Uh, uh, can I go to the toilet first? It's a number two. No, okay, I'll, can I, I'll clinch. I'll first go get milk at the shop. But it's important to note, guys, that I choose to be this way. I choose to be this way. Right? In this, don't put that on. Is it, is it weird? Is it distracting to have that here? Oh, no, it's cool. Okay. Like in this era of evolving gender dynamics, right? I, I choose to be this way. My wife is not forcing me to do anything that I don't want to do of my own free will. She, she told me to make that clear to you people. She told me. But it's true, bro. I'm a man. I'm not scared of my wife. Yeah, she's not here. That's why I'm saying that. Uh, but like, okay, I am scared, but only if I do stupid stuff. You know, I mean, we do stupid things sometimes. Like, let's say I'm sent to the shop to get milk, right? This is a common male errand. Babe, can you get some milk at the shop? Then you go to the shop to get milk. Then you have a male idea. Bing! Like, you think to yourself, while I'm at the shop buying the milk, don't, why don't I buy some other miscellaneous items that's of necessity in the home while I'm buying the milk? So you buy all the items, right? So the thing, come home like a professor, forget the milk. Make some noise if you know some mother idiot men are there like me. Like, <laughs> it's okay, it's fine. Uh, look here, you guys, like, I can already see. Like, <laughs> Like, like, I didn't even realize I forgot the milk until my wife calls from the other room, Riyadh, where's the milk? And I'm like, huh? That's when my sphincter loosens. <laughs> uh, what's the milk down there? Are, are you sure? <laughs> and I'm not good at lying on the spot, you know? If I think about it, I can come up with something, you know? I can come up with something. No, babe, I went to shop to get milk, but they were out of milk, so I was going to go to another shop. But I saw it was almost Maghrib, right? Almost time for the evening prayer. So I thought I'd come home and pray for your health and well-being, our children's health and well-being. And now I'm going to go out uh, and get the milk. Can I pick, pick you, get you some chocolate or something? Anything? Right? That's not bad. Like, and under pressure, that's not me, bruh. Under pressure, I'm like, um, uh, they, they discontinued milk. Because uh, you see, like, there was a drought in Cape Town, right? And because of the drought, the cows got uh, dehydrated. Yeah, and because of the dehydration, the cows couldn't produce sufficient lactation output. So for the time being, they had to discontinue milk. Riyadh, I asked to get almond milk. Yeah, yeah, the almond cows, also the almond cows got dehydrated. My wife doesn't play that. She comes into the room like Liam Neeson from the movie Taken. You know that, bruh? My wife walks into the room like a six foot seven American Irish, bruh, freaking the heck out of me. She comes in. I don't know who you think you are, but as a breastfeeding mother of four, I have a particular set of skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Now, if you go to the shop and get the milk, that'll be the end of it. No harm will come to you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will move to you. <laughs> Babe, I'm going to get the milk. Yo, all the slums of people clap for Moor. This, this is not cool, bruh. <laughs> Quiet the whole time, I say Moor and then applause. Okay, interesting. But it's weird. It's an interesting thing, you know. I realized, you know, you, you, in a happy marriage, you got to know how to argue with your partner, right? I can see these veterans over here. Uncles, you know. <laughs> right? In a happy marriage, you got to know how to argue with your partner. Because, like, arguments can yield positive results if you understand the value of arguments. You have two minds clashing and coming together and then seeing what the superior point of view is. Right? But in a happy marriage, you got to know how to argue with your partner. When we weren't this happy in our marriage, this is how we used to argue, like this. Shibidibidibidib. Not as happy in our marriage. Now we're super happy in our marriage, that's how we argue. Okay, you're right, you're right, that's a good point. You know, for me, the scoring system in a marriage argument is just like the scoring system in tennis. You gotta lose to get love. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? 
But there's a special kind of love that develops after nearly 20 years of marriage. I see it in the eyes of my wife. It's a special kind of love. You know, the young people, you guys don't know. This is an evolved kind of love. You know, I see it in the eyes of my wife. A special kind of love. How do I describe it? It's almost like hate, you know? You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a loving, it's a loving hatred. I will die for you, but I will kill you first if you don't pick up your socks. You know, when little things become irritating, like how you eat, you know, my wife's like, Riyad, yeah, do you really need to eat like that? And I'm like, how am I, how am I eating? You know, because I'm going to be, full disclosure, bruh, I'm one of those people who make one of, one of those sounds when I eat, right? Just one of those sounds. But now before you judge me, I can see people judging me over here. Like, I keep my mouth closed most of the time, right? I'm no savage. But you see, I've got a sinus problem. Even though I've got a massive nose, right? No air comes through my nostrils. So I have to open my mouth at some point. Otherwise, I'll suffocate. And that creates the ever so insignificant sound. An ever so gentle sound. My wife doesn't understand. She's always like, I, I, can't, I can't even eat Pringles in my own house, boss. You know, you know, when you're watching the TV, you know, maybe eating the Pringles like a... She's sitting next to you. Even if you keep your mouth closed, right? The sound of the Pringles will travel through the jawbone to irritate your significant other. you be like... Riyad, you know you chew like a cow. You chew like a cow. Uh, well, I am a moosa. I'm a moosa. Hey, corny but quick. No? Okay. And part of the charm of the Pringles is the crunchiness of the Pringles. Am I right, boss? It's not just the taste, it's the texture that's enjoyable, right? The hop is liquor. The hop is enjoyable. But I can eat Pringles like that. You know how I got eat Pringles after nearly 20 years of marriage in my own bloody house. I gotta take the whole Pringle, put it in my mouth, and let it dissolve. <laughs> I don't eat Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> this is so disappointing, but it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> this is how I have to do it. My wife on that then, she doesn't put the seatbelt on immediately when she gets in the car, you know, because she got more important things to do before she puts on a seatbelt, right? Like I put on my seatbelt immediately and, and not even like the Indian brasser. I know you Indian brasser, take the seat behind yourself like, like that, right? Or just the, the handle of the thing, no seatbelt, just go in there, right? But I put on my seatbelt immediately, right? And she doesn't do it immediately because she got more important things to do and I don't want to impose my sense of urgency on her in this patriarchal and male-dominated society. I want her to make decisions for herself because I respect the decision-making capabilities as a life partner. Hashtag me too, ladies. You know what I'm talking about, right? But you know that means essentially what that means. It means like we drive like this, right? Because she doesn't put the seatbelt on. This is how we drive. Ding! Baby, you're gonna put on your seatbelt. Stop rushing me. You're always rushing me. I'm gonna put it on now. I don't know why you're carrying on. It's not that irritating. I don't understand this. Maybe you ladies understand. I don't understand. She says the ting, ting, ting is not irritating. I don't understand this. The ting, ting is not irritating. But when I eat, Uncle, explain. It's a catastrophe. And I'm like, let me tell you something, honey. Love of my life. That ting sound was designed specifically by very intelligent engineers to be irritating to the human ear. They figured out scientifically the most annoying sound to the human auditory mechanism. And you think that ding, ding sound is fine. But the sound that I, your husband of nearly 20 years and the father of your four beautiful children, the sound that I have to make in order to nourish myself, in order to continue to be alive, on this earth where my sole purpose is your continued prosperity and happiness that is intolerable to you ding 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 she don't want to put on a seatbelt i want to reprogram the thing to go it's craziness bruh and i i actually before the pandemic, I wanted to go, i went to I was supposed to go do some writing work in america for trevor noah did you guys know this 
I was going to move there, but I couldn't make it work because I have four kids. I've been overpopulating the bloody earth, right? So I wanted to move there, right? And then I couldn't, pandemic came and I was like, oh, it's fine, you know, like I'll go there, right? Right after the pandemic. Now nah, this my that we need to go now. <laughs> Give up the daily show. So, so now I'm performing for Pedro's. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> no, it's all good. I, I didn't, I, I went to America, I tried to make it work, you know. But uh, like I also, nobody understood me, which I don't understand. Like, because uh, I'm a first language English speaker, people, right? There's no language I speak better than the language I'm speaking now. In matric, I've got an A for bloody English, right? Okay, I've got a C, but still. Still, right? This is my mother tongue, and no one understood me. The look of confusion on the Americans' faces when I used to speak is, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't place the accent. I can't place that. I can't place that. Um, wh where are you from? I'm like, I'm, I'm from Cape Town. Cape Town. Where in Afghanistan is that? <laughs> Afghanistan? The only way I could get them to understand me properly is if I speak to them in their own accent. What a huge joy that is. I gotta repeat myself all the time for stupid stuff in my mind. Right, can, can I have some water please? Sorry, what? Can I have some water please? I'm sorry, what? Can I have some <clears throat> water? Oh, water, you do water. You do. Because, I, I, seriously, I don't want the big difference between water and water is. That's how I say it. Water. Proudly, water. H-A-U-T-A. Water. But if I hear water, my brain does a mental transaction and goes, that water must equal water. Right? But the Americans, like, they can't do that. Right? I had a guy come up to me after the show, for real. A dude come up to me, dude, dude, bro. Dude, bro, can I talk to you, bro? And he was a bald guy. I don't... <laughs> dude, bro, can I talk to you, bro? Dude, I notice you do all those different accents in your act. Now, if you can do all those different accents, why, why do you talk the way you do? And I wanted to go, because your massive. <laughs> but I, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I'm a good Muslim. I went mad. Yeah, no, I didn't either. <laughs> but I came to the realization I have a weird accent because, like, I'm the way they don't understand the flatness of the accent, the Americans, right? They're not used to the flatness of the South African accent, right? They used to, uh, you know, like in America, they'll go, yeah, or yes, yeah. But like, yeah, we go, yes, yes. They will go, it is, it is. We go, it is, or it is. It's flat. Like, I'll pronounce it, rrr, and they'll pronounce it, rrr. So you pronounce things differently. Like, I'll pronounce it, racist. They'll pronounce it, Trump. So you see, <laughs> it's just the thing for the ears, bro. But I had to go there. I wanted to go. You know, but it was, it was, I wanted to, but it was frustrating. We couldn't do it, bruh. We couldn't, you know, we had COVID, all the weird stuff. As a, you, as a doctor, I used to get irritated, you know, with the people who weren't wearing the masks during uh, COVID. Like as a doctor, you get irritated. Yeah. People wear the mask, mask with a nose sticking out, pa! You know, they wear the mask with a, pa! For me, that's like putting on the underpants and then there's something like, that was a haram one. Let's move on. It's fine. <laughs> this frustrating time. You know? You had to do the shopping. I was, I was one of the brasser who went to go do the shopping. And you know, I hate shopping. I'm one of the guys who hate shopping. You know? Like, my wife enjoys the shopping experience. Like, uh, like I, I, okay. I don't want to say that all women like shopping. It's sexist to say that women love shopping. But my wife happens to be a woman who enjoys <laughs> the shopping experience. Right? Like you see the ladies go shopping sometimes. You know, it's like a Disney movie when they go to the mall. 
Ta-da! You know, all excited. And just behind, just behind the wife, you see the husband looking just as enthusiastic. <laughs> Always asking the same question, ah, how long are you going to be? Because I, I, I just want to go to the uh, a Vodacom shop to, to fix my Huawei phone. Yeah, yeah, that's how you pronounce it, Huawei, Huawei. Yeah, I know you write it, Huawei, but, but you pronounce it Huawei. In reality, you always want to go somewhere. Can't you just be present for once? Ladies like to say that. You can't just be present. Don't you just want to spend time with me? Can't you just be present? Uh, yeah, I want to be present. But can't I be present there by the Vodacom shop, please? You know, so, okay, I want to be supportive. I want to be supportive, so I'm one of the husbands that hold the handbags. Uncle, did you ever hold the handbag for, for, your, for your wife? Hold the handbag. No? The time is, the, uh, 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 the, the, uh, they didn't even have to have that pressure. Like, none of that. Like, not even the expectation. For us, like, sometimes, my general, you hold the handbag. I, I'm, I'm one of the husbands that hold the handbag. And I hate holding the handbag. I hate holding mother back. I hate it. I hate it. But I do it because I want and I hate it because I don't know how to hold the bag. As a man, I don't know how to. Like, because you can't look too comfortable. Like. <laughs> right? But my wife's always like buttering me up. Don't worry, Riyad. You my superhero. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, what, what kind of superhero? One of the X-Men. I'm like, oh, Wolverine? No, no, Caitlyn Jenner. I'm like, what up? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's weird. So I don't, I, I will hold the handbag, bro. I will hold the handbag. But don't make me look inside that bloody bag. Right? Ladies, don't, don't make us do that. Our primitive male brains are not equipped to deal with, looking, uh, with the celestial vortex that is a lady's handbag. Right? The amount of things that you can fit in that bloody thing like, like it, it defies the laws of physics. You know, I think the secret to the black hole exists within a lady's headpack. You know, men, we simple, bruh. Wallets, keys, cell phone. Wallets, keys, cell phone. Everything that's important to us is in this area over here. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the lady, no, bruh. My wife's always like, Riyad, can you just check in the bag for me, please? For my cell phone. I'm like, okay, bruh. Okay, Riyad, you're going to go in there now? No fear, bruh. No fear. <laughs> okay, check in this bag here. Yo, so much receipts in here, bruh. <laughs> hair clips, hair ties, you know, moisturizers, sanitizer, plasters, you know, tissue paper, makeup, sweets from spur. Ocean basket, Pedro's. <laughs> Two ran from 1969. There's one compartment, second compartment, there's battery charger, iPhone wire, inverter for load shedding. <laughs> hey, what? Babe, chick? Hey, babe, I haven't seen this for so long. Chick, I can't believe it. My balls. My balls. Can I keep, can I keep them? Can I keep them? No, okay, just one, just one. I'm gonna keep one. Okay, I'll keep one. Okay, come on. Then I, now I checked for a long time, I couldn't find the cell phone, right? So I responded like, babe, I can't find the cell phone. And she, I said it like, just like that, with bass in my voice. I can't find it. I think it's because I held onto my ball a little bit. I think so. And I think I said, and, and then she responded with, no, Riyad, open your eyes. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure it's in there. And then I said, no, babe, my eyes are open, huh? look here, open, I'm checking the thing, it's not here, bruh, I check, check under my balls, everything, is nothing, right, it's not just me that can forget things, you can forget things also, and then she responded, I'm sure you've heard this one, oh, I have to do everything myself, <laughs> right, so I was actually feeling very positive, I was like, yes, I'm going to win, because the cell phone was not in the bag, and you know, we get married, you know, you have little bits of, little disagreements, and you want to win the little arguments, and the cell phone wasn't there, and I was like, yes, I'm going to be right for once, yes, brah, not even a split second, she's like, are you blind, are you blind, <laughs> right, she didn't even look inside the thing, she didn't feel it, she just reached in, pulled it out like a magician, are you blind, I said, just take my ball back, it's fine, just take it back. It's safer with you in any case, bruh. 
you know? So I thought, now I'm going to go buy myself some shoes. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy myself some shoes, you know? I'm going to buy myself the shoes, and you have to deal with this overzealous shoe salesman. You know those guys' houses? You want to buy some shoes? <laughs> I'm like, no, I want to catch athletes' foot from the display models. Obviously, yeah, but I don't say that out loud, you know, I just say, you still like to buy some shoes. And you try on the shoes, right, and you all do that deer learning to walk, like thing. It's a very important part of the shoe buying ritual. Also, you have to press on the big toe. This is a very important part of the shoe buying ritual. Now, for kids, I understand the reason you do this, because you have to assess the growth potential within the confines of the shoe, right? For kids, I understand. But for adults, I don't know, my foot has been the same size, for the past 20 years. Why am I pressing on the bloody big toe? And I was buying sandals, so I don't even know what is the point of this whole thing. I did everything. I want to be supportive. I want to be supportive. My wife also asked me, I'm sharing too much here, but it's okay, it's fine, it's okay. My wife always sent me to buy pads, right? Pads, I mean feminine hygiene products. Uncle, you ever bought that for your... You cannot just blink if you wanna... Never, never, right? Okay, but look here, I, it, I, I don't like doing this thing, but I do it because I want to be supportive, right? And no matter how many I've been buying for 20 years, right, I still, my brain is still in denial when my wife asks me, right? I can say, yeah, I can give you some pads, please. And then like, I'm like, what do you want? Must I go to the CNA? You want me to write something down? You want pads with lines or no lines? And it's like, no, yeah, I can give you some pads. Oh, 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 the pads. All right, so I go buy the pads, that's fine. You know, I'll do it, you know? And I'm aware of all the details of the pads. You know, I know it's a, like, you guys, don't worry, I'm aware of this. this is, it, the, the, on the side of the pad boxes, all the things, is, there's little droplets on the side. Uncle, you know about the droplets? <laughs> you don't know, there's droplets on the side of the pad box. For those of you who don't know what that means, this indicates, those droplets indicate the amount of uh, internal tears in the heart of a husband. <laughs> you know, we have to buy the pads. Right? Okay, that's fine. Usually that's like a, ah, but okay, it's fine. I know what I'm dealing with here. It's fine. <laughs> so it's a weird thing. And then we have to go, you have to go look in the, walk in the parking lot, bruh. You have to walk in the parking lot. You go, go back to your car. You know, and I hate the people like looking for parking. You know, when you walk back to your car from the parking lot, right? I hate these people because they act so creepy. You know those people, you're just walking back to your car like a normal person and there's a bruh in his big SUV following you. <laughs> and then you get to the car and you have to deal with that mime through the car window. You know that mime, you know. And I'm always like, no, I'm, I'm not leaving. I'm just getting something from the car. You know your mime, I'm just getting something from the car. You know, and then the guy. And then I wait for the bride to go around the corner. Then I leave. <laughs> no, actually, actually, I actually don't do that. I think of doing that. But then I actually feel bad that I thought of doing that. Then I overcompensate and I act too nice because I feel bad that I did that. I'm a weird guy, right? I act too nice then at that point. Like, even if I don't want to leave, I leave, bro. It's weird. My wife was still inside. Now I'm the one looking for parking. I'm like, and then you see in the distance there, you know, that little indentation, the potential for parking there, that oasis in the desert. In the, and you get there, and there's a bloody Hyundai Atos. A mother Atos. And I'm like, listen here, if your car is just a little bit bigger than Hot Wheels, no? I'm telling you, take the car with you when you shop. You take the Atos, put it in your trolley. Or your wife's handbag, click, click, finish the shopping, and then come back. Sure. It's a frustrating thing, dude. You know? And I think everybody wants to do the right thing. This is the, this is the problem. Everybody wants to do the right thing, but uh, very often you don't know what the right thing is. You know? And the only time you get to understand what the right thing is, is to do the wrong thing first. You know? And uh, I think I damage my children because I do, like I mentioned, I do voices for my kids all the time, dude. Right? And uh, like, um, like I do this voice, this character called uh, Arnold, you know Arnold Schwarzenegger? Right? I used to do that all the time. And I thought, like, it's damaging my son, man.
because I heard him cry the other day and I thought I heard a little bit of Arnold Schwarzenegger come out like while he was crying. It was weird. I'm just hearing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to the room and like, yeah. I'm like, my son, what's wrong? He said, I can't see the TV. Tell him to get down. Yeah. You know? I see this whole scene, you know, there's a scene from Rocky V where Rocky has an argument with his adult son, right? It's a very motivational scene, right? Now, I used to do this whole scene, not with my adult son, but with my four-year-old. And I think it's damaging him, damaging him, you know, because he's just like minding his own business, just playing Lego, you know, and I walk in there as Rocky Sylvester Stallone. You ain't gonna believe this, but you just to fit right here. I used to hold you up and say to your mother, this kid is gonna be the best kid in the world. This kid is gonna be better than anybody ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. Every day watching was like a privilege. But somewhere on the night, things changed. You stopped being you. You start let people stick a finger in your face and tell you no good. And when things got hard, you start looking for someone to blame, like a big shadow. Right? Then I kneel down, stay in his eyes. Let me tell you something you already know. The world and all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you think you are, it will be you till your knees and gave it up permanently. Let me let it. Not you, not me, not anybody can hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. <laughs> That's how winning is done. Right? Now... <laughs> now in the movie, Rocky's son was, was like moved. He was like, to change. My son just pooped himself, bro. He's like, yeah, yeah. Like, it was frustrating, dude. I think I damaged my children, you know? But everybody wants to do the right thing. Like, like that's where sort of like a religion comes in. You know, because you've got all these different voices in your head. Like right? humans, we have different voices in our head that, that guide us. And a lot of these voices, like, confuse. Like, well, they conflict. Like from a spiritual perspective, some of you know this, right? You have your animal self, like or your nafs, like your animal self, which is like, like, like um, Trump, you know? Trump, that's the voice. Like if there's a burger over there, that voice will go, just eat the burger, folks. You know you want the burger. It's a fantastic burger. You know you want, it's a great burger. Just have the burger. You know you want to feel the burger in your mouth. It's just taste, you can have the burger. Right? Just that type of voice, right? And then you got your rational mind, your uckle. Uh, which will tell you something else, like Obama, who just said, well, uh, studies have shown that foods rich in trans fats, uh, saturated fats, uh, could increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. Shut the hell up, Obama. Just eat the burger, grab the burger, buy the buns, just have the burger. Just have it. And you got another, another voice in your head, it's like your heart, your, or your call, we'd call it call, right? Which is more like, like Madiba, which will say, Take the beggar, but then gave the beggar to someone less fortunate. Gave the beggar to a beggar. <laughs> I thank you. Right? So uh, all these voices and the religion comes along and tries to assimilate all these voices to follow a certain path. Now my wife is a little bit more religious than I am and uh, she doesn't like me to watch TV, right? TV, but I don't watch TV like for enjoyment, I watch it for research, bruh. Like for, like I watch the thing and then I like use the information to make funny scenarios, right? I do it for humanity, not for enjoyment, I do it for humanitarian purposes. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a humanitarian, like Imtia Suleiman, bruh. Like, like, okay, no, okay, but my wife doesn't like me to watch TV. She's tired of asking me to stop watching TV. So instead of doing that, she just, instead of telling me, she just plays Mufti Mink lectures very loud, bro. 
very loud on audio on thing, right? If I'm watching TV, I'll just hear Mufti Meng very loud. Like I'm watching something family friendly all of a sudden, just like maybe family friendly like Squid Game or, or, or Game of Thrones or something, just something that's suitable for all ages, right? And then I will just hear suddenly, we need to be wary of the scourge of television in the modern world. Allah save us and protect us. <laughs> okay, babe, I'll turn the TV off. You see, Mufti Meng is a normal guy, bruh. He's got his own family. I wonder if he ever gets upset in his own house. You know, open the cupboard. Who took my chupniks? Who took my chupniks? I was feeling for a delicious bowl of chupniks. But then I saw it was Asar. I went to make Asar. And when I returned, alas, my chupniks was no longer here. And now I'm forced to have a bowl of Doritos. Allah save us and protect us. Right? I was thinking, I was, don't hurt yourselves, bruh. Just, we know who you are now. Just, just sit and enjoy yourselves quietly. Right? right? I was thinking of just like making my own Mufti Meng CD secretly. Secretly flipping it in there with my wife's stash, you know? It's like, I've never heard this lecture before. Let me listen to it. It is imperative that you massage your husband's feet and rub his aching muscles and don't make him go shopping with you. These materialistic exploits distract us from what is important. Allah save us and protect us. <laughs> it's a weird thing, bruh. You know, you want to do the right thing, but it's very, very hard, bruh. Very, very difficult, you know. But I want to be positive about things because, like, I've, I've had a, a very, very frustrating time, bruh. Sure. It's pretty hectic, bruh. You know, I don't know what to do going next. People always ask me, like, why I gave up, like, medicine to do, uh, to do comedy. Like, I didn't plan to do this, right? But I had a weird experience as a young doctor. Very strange. Maybe I won't tell you the story. It's a bit weird. It's a bit weird, the story. But like, I, I did my internship at Natal Spread Hospital, right? It was voted the worst hospital of all time in South Africa, all right? Things kind of went down after I left, you know what I'm saying? It's one of those weird hospitals where the security guards used to check the doctor's car boots before we used to leave the hospital. They used to check our car boots. Like, we're going to steal something. And like, bruh, there's no, no bloody equipment in the hospital. Like, I mean, what do you think I'm going to steal? TB patients. Is this what you think? Like, open up the boot. There's Mr. Mashlango over there. <laughs> this is not a good doctor. He's no good. He said this was a CT scan. He said it was. It's hectic. You know, I, I, like, I'm going to share this with you now, right? People, like... In the ER, two weeks in, never been outside Cape Town. People used to put, went to the ER at Natal Spread. People used to put, uncle, or you just if you can deal with this, right? I, I, like, people used to put inanimate objects with a sun don't shine. Extremely frequently, boss. I saw horrible stuff. Two weeks going to, uh, the, the, two weeks, dude came in with a golden delicious apple. It was hectic. You know, he said it was in the bath and he tripped. Golden delicious apple, bruh. Like, I only have Granny Smith apples in my house now. You remove the apple, it was neither golden nor delicious. You know, it didn't happen again next time with the aerosol can. This is true. I remember clearly a Mr. Min aerosol can, dude. The dude was in the bath, he tripped. <laughs> Mr. Min aerosol can, tried to remove the can, and the cap stayed up there. We had to take the poor guy to theater to remove a Mr. Min aerosol can cap. And I saw the Mr. Min can afterwards. Mr. Min didn't look the same, bruh. He looked traumatized, this poor bruh. You know, usually Mr. Min is like, this guy couldn't make eye contact. He was like, oh. Right? Felt sorry for him, dude. And then it happened once, moved to Cape Town, this time with a light bulb. A light bulb. You all, bruh. And we only realized it was a light bulb when you put up the x-ray. Now, that was a moment, what we call cognitive dissonance. Because you've never seen a light bulb in that position. It was weird for all of us. We put up the, the, the x-ray. And honestly, bro, it, looked, it was weird because it looked like a good idea and a bad idea. <laughs> At the same time, dude. And then it happened one more time with the apple again, right? But this time, expertise, we removed the apple. Apple was completely fine. iTunes still worked. The cloud was still functioning. Okay, that wasn't true, but the other stuff was true. The other stuff was true. <laughs> 
It's a weird thing, you know. But I say, I would say, remain positive, you know, because like at least, you know, I don't know if crime is crime is good, crime is bad at the moment, you know, crime is okay. You know, I was because I was hijacked uh, many years ago, and I haven't been the victim of crime since then. But I was hijacked weird time. But I was hijacked by a squint guy, right? The skill bra hijacked me, right? And 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 uh, medically we call it strabismus, right? Some people have this affliction. I was hijacked by a bra like this, and I think I upset him because at first I didn't even know he was trying to hijack me. I was like, hey, dude behind me is getting jacked. He was pissed off, man. He took my bloody bicycle, you know. Then he made me a hostage. He put me on the handlebars of the bicycle like that, and we were driving around. And we got to talking, and it turns out that when he was born, this guy, he was born with no eyelid, right? So, so when they circumcised him, um, they did a revolutionary new procedure where they used the skin to, to build him a new one. I think it was called a circumvision. I think so. So, so nice cock uh, <laughs> But he's also got foresight. That's the advantage also. So guys, it's been liquor. Um, I, I hear that you guys are coming to Cape Town. Uh, Bernard said that, you know, you thought I was from Mitchell's plane. No, bruh. I got all my front teeth, bruh. <laughs> no, um, but uh, looking forward to that, I must definitely try. I haven't... Uh, tried uh, Pedro's yet, so I'm definitely going to check that in Cape Town. And I just want to uh, wish you guys all the best uh, for the upcoming, upcoming uh, uh, year. You know, we've been through a weird time. It's been very, very frustrating, very challenging. And I think we, inshallah, we can have a little bit of the respite, you know, in uh, the up upcoming months. And um, I just want to say on behalf of myself, of all the audiences I've ever had, guys, you guys have by far been the most, uh, the, the most recent of all my audiences. I mean that from the bottom of our heart, eh? No audience has been more recent than you. No, no, you were great and have a wonderful evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.